Hey everyone, it's Cygnus, and welcome to Create Astral, a mod pack oriented around the Create mod and using it and a bunch of other automation to literally reach for the stars. Well, more specifically, the moon, which isn't out right now. Uh, it's a mod pack made by Lasky, I believe, and it came out a little while ago while I was on my little hiatus, which, by the way, if you're not aware, I lost my Minecraft account, and I don't mean like I forgot the password, I mean someone literally stole it. They were playing on Skyblock, on Hypixel, with my Minecraft account. It was very weird. Uh, I spoke to them, couldn't get it back, and Minecraft terminated the account instead, so now I have this one, which I'm really lucky that I just was able to get my name back and they didn't, like, keep it. So, I have my uh, old Minecraft account. Uh, named Cygnus plays again, and I can keep doing these, and that does come with a different consequence, however. I can't continue with any of my previous series, because as you may know, a lot of information is tied to your account and your Minecraft UUID, your user ID, and so if you log in on a new account, then you don't have any of that progress, which includes, say, on my All the Magic series, a little iron golem, on my All the Magic series, I don't have my inventory, which is where all of my items are. All of them, considering I am using a item storage method that puts all of the items in the little uh, occultic circle thing. I can't access it anymore, and when I tried, it took me to a unique inventory that was empty. Which is great! I love not being able to access my inventory on one of my favorite series that I was doing. but. Enough with that, we're continuing with a hardcore series here. Now, Create Astral, as I mentioned earlier, it's centered around predictably Create. It's done in the Fabric Mod Loader and is a pretty diverse mod pack. And when I was walking around doing some exploration, there's a lot to it. I've definitely seen some interesting animals and the mod pack, it's, that's an example of one. This mod pack, like many others, has a quest system, I believe with CubeJS. And the first one is a special thanks. So. Uh, to the team that made this, including Lizard Liel, Leliel? Lizard Leliel, which did some chapters of the quests, uh, Ethanicus did the data pack structure, Iris did the music, and Choconiosom did almost all of the buildings in Astral Rails, which we will get to see much later. And that gives us a little information and general progression, which, oh, cool. So it just gives us a little tutorial page that we can go through as we progress. Now, what we really need to do is make a crafting table because that's going to get us started. And of course we do spawn by a village, so that's very convenient as it will provide us with a bed and we can use middle mouse click for me to sort inventories and quickly loot them. Makes it a lot easier when going through uh, chests that have a lot of stuff in them. It auto sorts them for you. Takes some of the work out of it. And I believe this first quest that we're gonna do, yeah, it gives us a bed and torches so we won't have to worry about the night. We can just go ahead and skip those. There's a brewing stand here, that'll be useful. Anything up there? Probably gonna end up settling very close to this, but I wanna get started with some of the base mods as quickly as possible. So one of the first mods we're gonna actually be touching is called Hephaestus. Now, you might have heard of Tinker's Construct, I messed around with it before on Hexit, and Hephaestus is its sort of spiritual successor on Fabric, which it, it is fundamentally the same, almost all of the features are the same, uh, all of the construction methods. If you're familiar with Tinker's Construct, then it shouldn't be too far out of your uh, scope. Alright, so I think we've done enough looting here. Go ahead and cut some wood and get started. And I love the forest that we're starting in. It's absolutely beautiful. It's very, uh, it fits the season. It's October when I'm recording this. Uh, I don't know when you'll be watching it, but it's very, uh, it's very fall and I like that. But let's just go ahead and get started. The core of almost all Minecraft that is in a skyblock and even some skyblocks. Looks like we have a wasp over there of some kind. Did it just burrow into the ground? Oh, that's terrifying. Is that something I need to be aware of? Well, I'll look into that a little bit later. Now is not the time. So let's get a crafting table, and this does have the Tinker's Construct table, so we will have to eventually make that. We can go ahead and make some tools real fast. Just some simple tools to get us started. Oh, wait, I can't. Now, that relates to what I was mentioning earlier. 
we have to use the patterns. So this is gonna give us a bed and a torch, and then we can click here. So first we need to make a three by three pattern. How do we do that? Well, just sticks and wood, which we can go ahead and do that real fast. Let's go ahead and make two. There we go. Now, what do we use the patterns for? We can put them into a part builder and a tinker station to actually make the parts that we need. So this needs two patterns and some planks, and this needs three patterns, so we need minimum five patterns. Let's go ahead and make a few more patterns. That should be good. Do that. And we have a part builder. And we're going to need to grab some more wood, so let's go ahead and pick this up real fast and grab some more wood. I don't think it's too concerned about the type of wood we're grabbing. I think all of them just turn into the same part, the little pattern. So we should just be able to grab these birch logs and convert them into what we need. And there we go, that should be good. And we'll go and break the base one. And let's not leave any sticks on the ground or saplings. We will need those later. A lot of them. Okay, and it is starting to get dark, so we'll just have to be aware of that. And if you're wondering what that noise is, it's snails. Yep, this has naturalist, which adds snails among many other things. They're very cute. I don't know if they do anything, and I've never checked. I don't have it in my heart to just go around hitting snails. A little bit of that, and there we go, Tinker Station. So, uh, with these two types of crafting tables and a uh, Tinker's Table, which I believe we just... Did they change the recipe? Oh, they did. Let me see what it is in this. Okay, so it's a pattern on top of a log. That's good to know. So, log, pattern, crafting station. So, let's go ahead and nab this and take it inside real fast, because we're going to do a little bit of crafting before we get on the move. Now, because this is the crafting method, there's a limit on what we can craft based on what we can make. So, first things first. Uh, let's just go through these tables real fast. So the crafting station is useful because it connects all of the different parts. And wow, these villagers are very noisy. Let me just turn down friendly creatures for a little bit. Okay, guys. Yep, this is your house. Okay, everyone's just... Are you, are you coming in? Oh, you too? Okay. No? Maybe I should have picked a different house. Well, the crafting station is useful because it automatically connects to all adjacent... Tinker stations through Hephaestus. So the Tinker station is for actually making the parts. So if we want to make, say, a pick, we need the pick head, the tool handle, and a round plate. If we want to make a pick axe, then we need the pick head, a tool handle, and a tool binding. And all of the tools that we can make can be made this way. So the ones that we want to prioritize right now are a pickaxe and a sword. So how do we make that? Well, we put a pattern in there, and then we put a acceptable entry over on this side and then we can go ahead and make the tool so this says it needs two patterns and one material so we're missing one and there we go and that will make that so it actually only needed one pattern and then two of the pieces and then we can put two more here we need a tool handle and then we'll put the pattern in and let's, let's make this the uh, tool binding out of something else. Let's see what else we can make it out of. That lets us make a repair kit, which is interesting. Flowers don't make anything. Feathers don't make anything. Saplings make nothing. Sticks. Yeah, that's a pretty low quality component. But we can get a wood tool binding, and then we can put it in here. Select the pickaxe option. And put them all together. And we have an oak wooden pickaxe. Now with the pickaxe, we can go outside, well, maybe tomorrow. We have our bed, let's go to sleep. Now you're probably wondering, there are things at night that I definitely don't want to encounter that I saw when I was going through some of the things of the pack in a little creative world, just exploring. And yeah, there's some scary things at night that I, that I would much rather avoid. For now, we can go ahead and craft one more thing. Let's do the patterns. Uh, actually, yeah, let's actually hold off on this. We're going to leave these here and we're going to go out and we're going to go just grab some stone so we can make some better parts. Now, we could take this stone, but I don't want to just go around breaking their house and decorations. It seems a little mean-spirited. I'm going to go over here. Looks like they had a little mine shaft that they started but never finished. And we can break this. Dig with a bed, as one always does and just break some more stone. Now, what makes Hephaestus and Tinker's Construct different than many other tool mods is it allows you to just make anything 
out of pretty much anything. So we'll be able to make a tool entirely out of stone, no sticks required. It looks like we have some tin here. That'll be very useful for, useful for Tech Reborn, which we will be getting into hopefully soon. Right now, it's all about tools. We got some stone. I think that should be good. And just for safe measure, let's drop a torch in there so nothing's immediately spawning. And just keep an eye out for any anything that indicates there might be a wasp underground because I don't know if that's a thing. I know in real life, many wasps live in burrows underground, but... I don't know if they've integrated that into the mod, and I frankly hope they didn't. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. We're going to get a axe head, which requires a little bit more stone, and we will make a tool handle as well, and then a tool binding. Now, this isn't going to be the best tool, of course. It will be better than what we had, and we can use this and start gathering some trees. So, I'm gonna take a look under the water. Is there anything out there? Uh, just fish. Okay. And I don't believe that this mod pack has any sort of, like, tree felling or uh, way to break larger nodes. For now, we'll just be gathering by hand, which, honestly, I'm perfectly fine with. And fortunately, with Tinkers, if a tool breaks, it just becomes unusable. You can actually just very easily go and repair it. So you'll never have to worry about losing all of your tools. The downside is, to my knowledge... The tools don't enchant in the same way, so we'll have to uh, approach that problem when we get there. But hopefully it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I don't know if I'm going to be able to build a house today. But I definitely want to get started with tools, and then probably I will figure out the type of house I'm going to build. Because I definitely I need to get some inspiration. I have all of this going on. I think it's very pretty. I really like the whole uh, autumnal looking forest. It's an old growth birch forest right next to a dark oak. So definitely a lot of color here and I don't wanna skip out on that in a build. Let's go ahead and make more of our things that we need, the patterns. Let's see if we can make a iron tool. I do have emeralds here, which are comparable to diamond in quality, I believe. But unfortunately, as you can see, we can't use them in this format. And we'll get to why that is later, but it's a very important thing and is going to limit us on what we can make for a little while. And we'll have to definitely, as you can see here, there's a bunch of like molten materials. Yeah, we need to make casts of all of these so that we can actually start crafting them. And if you've seen my playthrough of Hexit, or Hexit 2 rather, uh, you'll have seen me go through that. Let's go ahead and put all the parts in order, preferably in the right places. And we have a stone pickaxe, and I'm just gonna drop this off. It's oak wood pickaxe right there. We'll pick these up, and we can go ahead and do this. So one benefit compared to how uh, Tinker's Construct back in the day used to do the part builder, you had to make all of your... Uh, little patterns with uh, shapes independently and then you stored them. This just includes them by default. So you don't have to worry about making each of those little parts. So I have an axe and a pickaxe. And the axe right now will serve pretty well as a rudimentary weapon. It is still an axe and this is I believe 1.18. So nothing to worry about there. And I want to do a bit of exploring. Okay, this, this is good. So the version of Create that we're using does have train tracks and trains, and it sounds like there's... Oh, hello. What are you doing that down there? Oh, I actually didn't notice that. Come on. Yeah, I am just struggling to hit this guy right now. Oh, he has a gun! Oh no! That skeleton had a gun! That... Hmm. Now what is this? Is this some of the... Yeah, Crimsite, okay. That was... Well, I am not healthy now. Uh, good thing I have all of these potatoes and bread. Let's eat some of this bread and take a look around. 
Yeah, I... I was not expecting to be shot at by a skeleton. Well, I was, just typically with a bow? But I suppose that wouldn't really make too much sense, would it? It's to create mod pack about industrializing to space. So I guess, yeah, it kind of makes sense that you would have a weapon that's slightly better than a bow. Still, it was a uh, pretty painful. Okay, so looks like we have some kind of train station going on here. Probably minced beef and wheat dough from Farmer's Delight. That'll be good for making food. What else do we have for wheat dough? All right, well, let's take a quick look at our quest. So we completed a couple while we were going. So no reward for the part builder or tinker station. We got the tool part e achievement. So each tool usually consists of three or more components, which can be combined into a full tool. We gave it a go. And we are now a novice tinker. So we get tinker's gadgetry, uh, which includes slime items and Encyclopedia of Tinkering. So if you know about my Hexit playthrough, you know how I feel about slime boots. I love them very much because they allow me to go very fast. So we're probably going to do that. I very much like having the ability to go fast in any game I'm playing, Minecraft especially, because there's something just so satisfying about speed in Minecraft. Let's go ahead and... So the next thing it wants us to do is gather all of the ores for a cake, but we need to get started with some resources. So that's a good place to start, and that will start unlocking chapter one. Currently, run 0 0.5, but we need to unlock chapter one, and we can also make a furnace to get us going in the right direction. So let's go ahead and head back to our little village, and we're gonna find a place to set up a mine for the time being. And we may actually also find a place to set up a house, but I'm gonna need to look at some inspiration, and get an idea of the type of house I want to build with the resources that we have. And we got birch forest, dark oak, and oak wood. And it's of course going to take me some time to gather that resources, those resources. So it, it may be a in-between videos kind of gathering. And then I'll uh, probably build it in the next episode. But for now, I just want to do a little bit of mining and get us going. Yeah, let's head back to where we were with the mine shaft that I started. Uh, let's go ahead and just slap down one of those, and then a couple of these. Pick those up. Slap down a bed. Build a door. Put the door down. There we go. Take a nap. Okay, so let's also make a storage solution so we can make they have a couple different options for storage so barrels are one method of storage that we can go down but we'll probably need to do a little bit more before we can make proper use of that okay so first things first let's go down into the underground and i'm not going to do anything fancy since this won't be our permanent home so i'm not too worried about making it aesthetically pleasing but in order for us to make a furnace, I believe we need at least three ores. Now let's see if it actually works with this. We haven't tested. Okay, so actually, uh, we found our zinc, so we can just plop down a furnace. Uh, that didn't count, so I'm going to pick it up real fast. There we go. Yeah, it did say that some quests won't count if made in, that, in the Tinker's crafting station. Or the Hephaestus crafting station, rather. So, kind of expected. Next thing it wants us to do is go on to storage upgrades. So, go ahead and check that off. We're going to be moving on soon to creating factories that produce items forever. And I know it says we'll be doing that soon. We are nowhere near that, don't worry. But we're making our way. So, let's go ahead and slap some coal in there. Actually, we'll take a half stack of that. And I'm going to see if I can make a barrel. Okay. Okay can definitely make a barrel. Just one barrel for now, nothing fancy. And we can put away a bunch of our extraneous items. Make sure we bring our food with us. We don't need our seeds and onion or our encyclopedia yet. But let's go ahead and bring apples and our coal. We'll make some more torches. There we go. So we have some extra torches for when we start to uh, run out. And I think that should be it. So we can just get right down to mining. And 
I'm going to go ahead and skip through this because this is kind of a boring part. And I will see you guys in a few minutes. All right, so we didn't make it too, too far, but something just happened and I wanted to show you guys sort of how this works. So as you can see in my little crafting bar, my pickaxe broke. And that would be unfortunate if not for the fact that I'm able to repair it. So I can go ahead and drop it in here and drop in some cobblestone. It'll take the appropriate amount and then I can pull it back out and it just fixes it. So I'm able to just immediately get this repaired without actually having to like craft an anvil or make a new one, which is very conservative on parts in general and means that most tools can technically last as long as you want to use them. There's no genuine restriction on how long they're going to last on their own. But I still have some mining to do because I haven't actually found any resources yet. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep doing that. Anyways, I will be right back. All right, so it's been a few minutes and I've been mining for a little while. I managed to find some copper, some coal, and a bit more tin. I still need to find some iron before I can finish the essential materials quest, though, and move on. The clay, I'm not too worried about. It's, well, it's, it's just outside. Like, I can probably find it pretty quick. What are you doing down there, buddy? Swim. There you go. Well, what I wanted to show you is we actually have enough copper to move on to the next tier of tools. I believe they're called dwarven tools, or they're just copper tools, frankly. But they have the dwarven trait. Now, what does the dwarven trait do? Well, let's find out. We can open up the Encyclopedia of Tinkering, and we can find out what it does. So these are Tier 1 tools. So let's go over to Copper. So it provides Dwarven. Tools mine faster the deeper you mine, just don't mine too deep. It grants miner speed at lower depth, plus 6 per 64 blocks below 64. So the farther down we go, the better it gets. And this is still Tier 1, but it's a little bit better than Stone. I believe, which is, let's see. So any rock just gets stone bound where it mines faster as it wears out, but does less damage. This has a durability of 130. And then copper has 210 and can is the harvest tier of iron. This is harvest tier stone. And beyond that, we're, we can't really do any more. Ideally, we would get leather or string to improve our tools, but I'm willing to settle with copper for now. So. We got the task completed for copper ingots, which is useful, but let's go ahead and drop into our part builder and drop our copper in. Let's make a pick head, a tool handle, and a tool binding, and then put these together. And there we go. And we're also going to make a sword. So I believe that just requires a small blade, a tool handle, and let's see what the other thing is. Is it two tool handles? Great. So we can do that, split those up, and there we go. Now we have a sword, and that went through most of the copper that we had in there. But with that, we can actually continue mining. My goal is I want to finish this as soon as possible. So once this is done cooking, I'll put in the tin, and then we can switch over to iron as soon as I find it. So let's actually give this pickaxe a try. So we are below, we're at 36. Oh yeah, it's definitely faster. Okay. And allegedly this will just improve as we go. The downside being, of course, we have to repair it with copper. But copper is abundant and a base Minecraft doesn't really do a whole lot. Though apparently that's changing with 1.21. And, you know, I'm actually pretty interested, especially with the whole auto crafter thing coming out. That fascinates me. Like, it's a whole redstone tool that you can just use to quickly make things and from what I was looking at and what I've tested in the snapshot it's not too difficult to set up a auto crafting system especially if you're just doing something as simple as like I don't have any torches on me something as simple as just mass producing say bows to make dispensers setting that stuff up to time it doesn't seem like it would be too difficult and honestly I'm really excited to see where that goes, because 
It's one of those features that was modded into the game so many times, and I just assumed it's never going to make it into base Minecraft. After all, why would it? It's something I always figured breaks one of their cardinal rules of how Minecraft should work. That being like, this is something that is able to perform multiple actions without someone actually having to interact with it. And typically anything added requires user interaction to do multiple things. Now I suppose there's other things they've added that do that and break that little rule. Or I could just be misinterpreting the rule. But I remember that being a whole... Oh, oh hello. That's exciting, and with tons of copper. Oh, and you may notice, when you mine the copper, any copper not already exposed starts as orange, and then turns green, like a second or two after it's exposed. See? And it's green. Orange, green. And that's because it's oxidizing. Let me get to sort of see that, and I don't know why it's bursting the way that it is. Let's go ahead and put a torch, torch. Yeah, we're good there. Don't want anything spawning in here and harassing me. There we go. And there we go. And there's not water down there, but it is a dripstone cave, which could be very valuable. Especially if it's one of the more open-ended ones. Though, as we've learned, skeletons have guns. So I definitely want to get some armor before I do anything. And with all this copper, I actually should be able to make some. At least in theory, though, I may need the Hephaestus Forge before I can do that. Let's, let's check out a little further down, see if we can see anything. Ooh, perfect! Iron, that is exactly what I've been looking for, and it's just two. Great. I love finding two iron. Is that redstone down there? Looks like it. We don't need redstone, we need iron. Get a little lower down. Drop some torches. Doo -doo. Enderman and a creeper. Let's steer clear of that. Definitely some zombies and skeletons as well. Okay, so this cave has turned into something a little dangerous, and we'll keep an eye on that. But we now have two raw iron. I'm going to go fix my pickaxe and see if I can find just a few more. I only need eight, and then I can proceed. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to sleep first because it's nighttime according to the little clock in the top right. And definitely don't want to be caught out at night or risking having too many spookies spawn outside. We have way more copper than I thought we would have. Okay, yeah, we're not running out of that. I say that, but we're going to run out. Nope. Let's actually see. Can I make armor? Alright, so it looks like I can actually just make armor in the normal way, so I don't actually need to use anything special for it. I think I'm actually going to be one short. Let's uh, slap some more ore in. Actually, I think I will have exactly what I need. I will. Okay, so this is not that great, but it's better than nothing. And I should also be able to make a shield if they have copper shields. They probably do not. Then in that case, I'm going to pop this out, pop in some iron, and make a shield. And let's even double check. Yep, shield is made in the exact same way. And it looks like there's a bunch of MC dungeon shields that I can get into later. That's exciting. So let's go ahead and grab that. Now we have a shield, and we are ready to go. So now if we encounter any nasties down there, we can actually fight them. And we're not at risk of, you know, immediately unaliving to anything that wants to hit us. And maybe we can actually block bullets, though. I don't know how effective that will be. But let's go ahead and crawl on down here. And do a little bit of exploring. Got some copper there. This is zinc. We will need that. Can drop torches. And let's build a little rudimentary staircase. Not too high. Not gonna lie, a little tense. Because I know some very weird things in these places. Lots of bats. Deep Slate Redstone, okay. Lapis, looks like some Deep Slate Iron as well. Getting more iron as we go. I seem to have been a little worried over nothing. It's a whole lot of nothing kind of cave. 
Maybe it continues down this way? Uh, nope. Just gravel. Great. Oh, wait, maybe. Maybe we got some- nope. Just diorite. Well, that's okay. We will need diorite. It's very useful for making andesite, which we will need a lot of for create. But let's go ahead and see where that deep slate iron go. Right here. Deep slate iron. Take some of that. Let's go ahead and grab the deep slate redstone. No harm. And there's some lapis over here, which I believe has some functionality with the Hephaestus mod. Now, you just saw I got a little notice about a getting dyes. So I can make a little thing called a package crafter using dyes. And the package crafter will allow me to essentially, well, I don't use the dyes to make the package crafter. I use the dyes to color the packages it makes. And these are like early game shulker boxes. They have a small inventory, but they only take up one inventory themselves and you can place them down and loot them whenever you need, which actually seems like a good thing for us to do because I'm going to be running out of items, or rather inventory space, very fast. So let's actually do that. Let's go up here and go ahead and make our little package maker thing. So what did this actually need? Package crafter, just some any log, some planks, a block of copper, and a chest. So we can grab everything we need. I actually think we have everything we need. Yeah, we do. There we go. We have our wood. We have two iron. Let's, or we have two copper. Let's go ahead and smelt up enough to make a block. And done. And we can go ahead and craft a block. Let's do that. Block of copper. And then we need a chest. Don't think it's picky. Yep. And then logs on these sections. A block of copper, and then planks, and now we have a package crafter. Let's go ahead and set this back here. And so we can apply a die to it. And we choose a frame. So we do that. We add a copper ingot, which fortunately we're smelting somewhere right there. We add a die of our choice. So let's go ahead and make some blue die. I believe we have some flowers. So we can make... A yellow die as well. So we'll make a yellow die and the core is... let's do that. And we get a package just like that. And it says how much can be stored in it and we can right click like that and it just puts stuff into it. So it doesn't hold a whole lot but it holds something so we can actually put in... ah so if you Hold shift and right click, you can put the whole stack of things into it. So right now, if we go ahead and crouch and break this, I think we have to hit a different side of it. Yep, there we go. We can pick it up and we can see it has a birch log frame, diorite core, and yellow front. And inside of it is 112 raw copper and that's about it. So we can actually store all of our little minerals in that which will make it a little easier for us going forward. It's like we can't store anything else in it. Let's actually read about this. Okay, so it's for dedicated items. You can hold one item in it, but you can hold a lot of them. And fortunately, we get a bunch more packages for our troubles. But I actually think that's going to be a good place to end this. And in the next episode, hopefully we're going to get a home and we're going to continue with some Tinker's Construct. And hopefully in the next episode, we're going to finally get a house. And we're going to continue with Hephaestus. Which may include setting up a proper forge. And also doing a bit more exploring and setting some stuff up for the future. Like little farms that we'll need to do. Mostly for food. Because if we run out of food, it's game over for us. Because emptying that food bar will result in unaliving, which is very much not good. But I will see you all in the next episode, and until then, bye bye <laughs>